Gracious Father, as we come before you, we ask that you would once again enlighten our hearts and minds, comfort us with your spirit, guide us with your wisdom, and help us to once again bless one another. We thank you for this opportunity, for these four youth, to share with us the message of your hope and life in you. And so bless what they do, bless us all because of what they do, and keep us all under your care as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
Max, the eighth chapter, it begins with verse 26. It explains to us, once again, the remarkable desire that the Father has in heaven to make us a part of his life. And the extraordinary extent that he has gone to, see, to bring so many individuals into the faith. This is um, a very unique one, but it also shows the incredible desire that the Lord has to bring grace into the life of those. And the angel of the Lord said to the fellow, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert plain. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come, and come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shears is silent, he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this, this generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in his own. As he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The epistle is found in 1 John 4, chapter 15. <coughs> I have spent two years with these kids trying to get them to understand what I believe are basic truths. The importance of the basic truths are explained in this passage. God asks us as believers to know enough about his word that if someone comes in and tries to mislead us, we will stop them to protect everyone else. He asks us to be aware of the word enough and his truths that if someone comes and tries to pervert it, we are wise enough to know what the perversion is. This text is remarkably important because it focuses on the need and importance of his word for every moment of our life. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, and God sent his Son, only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Would you please rise for the reading of the gospel? The only gospel for this point is found in the 15th chapter of John, if you get the first one. When the Lord gives us allegories, he gives us those that are so familiar that we cannot miss the meaning. And this is a remarkable one. 
because of how uh, completely it explains to us that we are saved by grace alone, that we do goodness by grace alone, that everything that we can take any credit for is only simple. And what uh, we give to the Lord is all in our goodness. It is a remarkable text so that we can always understand how valuable we are in the Lord's eyes. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Would you please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed at the back of the hymn? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of the last. Amen. Be seated.
is my 31st time of doing this with kids. These kids are more nervous than any of the 31, 30 before them. So if they forget their name, it's okay. By the way, I do give them names so that those of you who are listening so you understand. This is Reggie. This is Perry. This is Siva. And this is Dina. That will be their names for me for the next 30 years. Siva, are you ready? Can you explain to me? What are the invisible parts? The 
body and blood of the Lord. And what benefits does God offer us? Unity, forgiveness, and spiritual strength. Because we have bread and wine in his body and blood, what is it pointing us to? He was fully God and he was fully man. Rachel. What truth can you tell me about the supper? It was given to us by Jesus himself. The rules for the supper were given to us by Jesus himself. Blessings are given from Jesus himself. And it is the supper is explained in Jesus' word, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and 1 Corinthians 11. Stephen, does the supper always make the supper? Yes. Reggie? Yes. If we change the supper, how much do we mess it up? That's true. Why does God ask us to follow His words, not ours? Because it's God's words. Harry. What is the altar? Speak louder, please. God's place of grace. And what does grace mean? What we don't deserve. Why do we have two candles on the altar itself? To show that Jesus was man and God. Parrot, you did very well. I'll hand it over to your buddy, Reggie. Reggie, why do we have seven candles on the side of the altar, on each side? To represent the unity between heaven and earth. Louder, please. To represent the unity between heaven and earth. Okay. Why do we have a Bible in the Old? Because it's God's holy book. What do we only listen to? God. Okay. Sema, first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Me? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Sema, second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Me? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, and lie or deceive by his name, but instead <coughs> go upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Reggie, what's the third commandment? The third commandment is remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Me? And this means that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Okay, hey, Perry, fourth commandment. You, you shall honor your father and mother so that it may be well with you and you will may live longer in the earth, this earth. And you, sh you, should fear, you should fear my God so that you do not anger or despise your parents <coughs> or other authorities, but, uh, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Reggie, the fifth commandment is you shall not murder. And the meaning is that you should fear and love God so that you do not hurt or harm your neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Eden. Sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life with what we say and do. Husband and wife should love and honor each other. Perry, seventh commandment. You shall not steal. You, we should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his money and possessions. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. We should fear and love God so we do not tell lies about our neighbor, slander him, hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and
the golden cow. Okay. Now, what is the importance of forty? That's how long God chooses to Okay. How did, did Moses set the whole time for it then? For this? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, first we can let it explain what? Ready? Okay, the God part of the commandments. Very good answer. Uh, Siva, what does the last seven explain? How to bring honor to God by how we treat our fellow believers. Okay, the first commandment is the basis for what? Gina. Let me help you say all the other ones. All the other ones. Excellent answer. <laughs> what, what is the fourth commandment the basis for? Louder, please. The guiding principle for the last seven in how we treat. Okay. All right, Sina, what does Jesus say mean? One and only Savior. Perry, what's Christ mean? Messiah. Reggie, what's Messiah mean? Anointed one. Sina, what's anointed mean? Two four thumb. Dino, what's commandment? The rule of God. Perry, what's prayer? With God. Reggie, what's the Lord's prayer? The prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Okay, now what is it? It is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the Lord, the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good. See that? What is the Apostles' Creed? It is a statement of belief that explains the triune God. Perry, what's baptized? To apply water. Reggie, what's the Office of the Keys? It is the pastoral office given to the uh, congregation. Peter, what's absolution? When God removes our sins through his office. See, well, what's confession? Admitting your sins to God. Dino, yeah, what's Holy Communion? The Lord's Supper. What's Communion mean? Being made one. Perry, what's the Lamb of God? Jesus' sacrificial name. Reggie, what's Easter? It is the day of resurrection. See, but what's the resurrection? To rise again. Dino, yeah, what's Redeemer mean? <coughs> One who buys back with his own blood. Very right, what's justified? To uh, one who makes us holy. Reggie, what's sanctified? <coughs> Sanctifier is one who makes you. Yes. That is who? Sanctified. Okay. Dina, the Bible? God's holy book. See, how many Old Testament books? 39. Very how many New Testament books? Seven. What are the four Gospels, Reggie? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Dina, let's pass over. When the angel of death passed over the Israelites because of the Lamb's blood. Reggie, what's 40 mean? 40 is the number that God uses to complete his work. Give me examples in the Bible. Uh, five examples are when Moses went up to the mountain to get the tank. When it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, David was king for 40 years, Jesus spent 40 days out in the desert surrounded by temptation, and the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, Eric, where was Jesus baptized? Jordan River. Who baptized him? John the Baptist. And who was present at his baptism? The Father and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus as well. So that was. Oh, the Triune God. The Triune God. Okay, um, Siva, can you give me five minutes of baptism? Brings a new nature to the one baptized, old Adam, sinful nature, covered in righteousness, giving the nature of God. Baptized. 
baptized into the triune God, clothed in Christ, justified, declared worthy by the Lord, and placed into Christ's baptism. Okay. Um, Terry, can you give us some more?
sexual abstinence, to refraining from drinking alcoholic beverages, or using any drugs that would harm me. I will remain proper toward the opposite sex. I will control my tongue. I will give pastor permission to reprimand me as he sees fit if he learns I am breaking any of these promises. Be careful when you sign that one. <laughs> I promise to strive to learn from my mistakes, repent of my sins, and walk with integrity as a child of the Almighty God. By signing this, I formally declare my intent to remain true to what I have promised. If you are, it is now time to sign. In repentance and rest is your salvation. 
You may be the brightest. You have a mind that never stops. You think all the time, but you're clueless. <laughs> so this is my prayer for you, and all seriousness from our Lord to you, that each day you will continue to open your mind and heart to understand, to apply what you know, and to purely grow to an understanding of just how remarkably precious you are in His eyes. It has been my privilege to spend two years with you. It is my privilege to be your pastor. And I will pray that God will continue to open up your mind and heart for the wonder of His love for you. Perry?
Siva. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you. You have such a quick mind and you have amazingly good quips to throw back at me. You make me laugh in so many ways, and I love who you are. Don't you ever change. Listen to your mom. Listen to your dad. Listen to what the Lord has shown them in their wisdom. Trust in yourself, because God has given you a great mind and a great heart. Always understand the blessings that God wants to give by looking to where He promises them to you. This day and every day, hold close to what He has given you, which is the Son. And always understand how precious you are in His eyes. May God be near you and always keep you His own.
as your people come before you on behalf of John Orange's family. John being one who was taken from this earth under your care and under your promise. But his daughter, Cindy, his parents, Alan Warren, and his wife, Lori, and his brother, Jim, they are dealing with the after, afterflow of the hurt and the pain and the burden. And we this day are placing them into your hands so that you can enrich and bless and strengthen them and lift them up as only you can. We do the same for the right family, for Marvin and his children, for all that who loved his father. We ask that the special comfort of your grace would be upon them, that the hope of the resurrection would surround them, and that you would carry them in the next coming days. As your people, dear Lord, we are understanding that we have the privilege of placing many into your hands, and we do, asking that you would guide and direct, bless and strengthen all those who are hurting, suffering, in need of your comfort. So we place them all into your hands, and we thank you for the many blessings that you will supply them. We this day are so humbled by the grace that you give, and we pray the prayer. Once again, that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God offers his wisdom through the Holy Scriptures. His Holy Spirit opens our minds to understand what we cannot on our own.